All right. Yes, we are recording, which is awesome. And uh, I am Kate Mellingen. I know most of you. And uh, this is uh, also a recording on Mother's Day 2020. And I'm so excited to have you all here. Uh, happy Mother's Day for those of you who are moms, whether you are a mom to a fur baby, which I am with the animals, or to a child, a human child. Happy Mother's Day. Or if you uh, consider yourself a mom in any way. And the theme of today is actually going to be about femininity and the mother archetype and mother earth. And this is because, um, oh, sweetness is a little itch here. Uh, this is because there's so much we can learn from, uh, from earth around femininity and feminine qualities. And so the meditation, I'm going to do a little differently today. We're going to do a little bit of a centering, but I want you to kind of connect into the horses. So I'm going to start briefly with just a quick introduction to them so you get a sense to connect in with them. This is Sweetness. He is our mini donkey. Hi. And we do a little walk here. You can see rain. On the right, this is midnight, saying hi first. Hi, buddy. So that is midnight. And this is Rain, and she is the lead mare here. <laughs> and we have Winter, who is out in pasture decided to not come in today uh, for this, which is fine. And then I'm going to show you Salida real quick. She is over here feeling good. Hi, girl. To connect in with her. You gonna come join us? All right. So I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna set up here so you have a good vision of these guys behind me. So let's start with see how that looks. Ah, so already what's interesting is they are at the gate. Um, they're in the place of a kind of looking to break free. <laughs> they uh, enjoy this area that we're in, but there isn't really grass and they were out grazing. And I brought them in so that we could connect to them more closely. Um, because in the meditation, I actually want to put them on instead of me this time. And so I wanted to kind of have them in here, but whatever, as you kind of think through what needs to break three for you on the feminine, um, that is part of this, right? And so <laughs> Rain likes that question. Um, so let's, uh, Let's start with just starting to, I'm going to start with uh, standing up, standing with them. So let's actually start with a grounding of our feet. And so start to wiggle your shoes and toes inside of your shoes. Start to feel really, really strong and centered, rooting down from your feet, like tree branches dropping down into the earth, and taking some deep breaths.
just starting to notice like a little bit of clearing of energy, like sending the breath to your third eye. And also to your throat. And you can keep your eyes open or closed since we're bringing the horses in this time. There may be an open eye opportunity here. As you kind of connect and tune in with these guys. So sending the breath like wind to wash away any tightness in your throat area. Sending the breath up here to your forehead. These are the two areas that rain have touched on me. Then going back down into your feet, wiggling and centering your feet. So there's an energy, as you can see already here with her, of demanding to be set free. So as we let me come back and sit for a second as we think about what freedom means for us. Start to say inside of yourself, I actively set myself free. I intentionally set myself free. Free of fear, free of constriction. And allowing your body to take up more space in the room that you're in by just noticing the expansion of energy from all parts of your body outwards. Maybe you go out right and left first, and then you go out front and back, just sending and pushing your energy out and bigger. Really feeling your energy touch all parts of the room Claiming and taking up that space. And start to feel down now into your sit bones on the chair, allowing them to get heavier, allowing the lower half of your body to get heavier and sinking into your seat. Feeling more supported. Feeling more comfortable in your space. Taking some deep breaths. I'm just noticing now your heart space. You might even want to put a hand on your heart and starting to feel pink energy, a ball of pink light there and allowing that to expand out all the way around your body, touching everything in your space. Releasing and clearing. So using the breath as a tool, if there's tightness or constriction anywhere in your body, 
or even anywhere in your room, just taking a deep breath in, breathing in peace, and sending it out and breathing out love. Sending that love 360 degrees around. Now take that pink energy extending out from your heart in all directions, bring it even further outside of your room into the building, down to the street, into the neighborhood, expanding it all the way through the city state, the country, and the world. I'm taking that pink light also and, and sending it down from your heart all the way down through your body, down through your feet, and just dropping like light beams or waterfalls into the earth and filling the earth with more love. And then notice any support that you might need coming up from the earth into your feet, into your body. And now noticing the sun above your head, dropping sunlight down through the top of your head, filling your whole body with sunlight. Making every cell of your body smile. silently giving thanks for Mother Earth, for the ways that she nurtures and takes care of us, for all the mother figures in your life, whether they be friends, birth moms, stepmoms, mothering bosses, mothering animals. I'm just giving things that they've kept you alive so far and that so has Earth. Now giving things to your own inner mother He's nurtured your inner child and inner teenager. It's giving her some of that pink love, pink light. Mixed with the sunlight, mixed with the earth. Oh. <sighs> I'm 
just take a moment now and reflect on the word femininity, what that might bring up for you. Just sending that sunlight mixed with the pink light, mixed with the earth energy to your own definition of femininity. Allowing it to become even freer. Now energetically inviting in the lead mare, the leader of the horse herd, that female archetype, inviting in that horse, rain being one of them if you need a picture, inviting her in. To your definition of femininity, Inviting her into the feminine energy in your body. And just tuning in and seeing what gifts she might bring. Lead mare. Maybe picture the lead mare standing right now in your house with you, meditating. Maybe she nuzzles a part of your body that needs extra help or healing. Maybe she makes a movement that has meaning to you, like rearing. Inviting in her strength and her softness, allowing those two energies to blend more in your body. Maybe reflecting on what it might mean if you are more of a lead mare in your own life. In your relationships. What might it mean also for your femininity if you had support of the masculine? that anchoring energy, the container to express more freely. <sighs> now anything and every, you can silently say yes if you'd like a clearing. But the intention is to clear any unwanted or unnecessary, unhelpful energies around our definitions of femininity or the expression of it. Ugh. 
So anything and everything that's getting in the way of full expression of the feminine energy in your body and your life, anything that is incorrect or misunderstandings, misbeliefs or judgments around the feminine. We like it. And then any and all, again, you can silently say yes, clearing around issues with the mother, any and all issues around our view of motherhood or the mother, our own mothering or our own mothers. We like to open. And in the open space, we just fill ourselves with the horsepower of the lead mare, the unconditional love of horses, the unconditional love of the healthy mother, the energy of Mother Earth that's supportive and nurturing, our own desire to nurture ourselves our own expression of flow and the healthy connection to the divine feminine and the goddess. So it is. Starting to feel into your body a little bit. Feel into the clarity of free expression. When you want something and what it looks like. Starting to come back into your body, into the room. Starting to feel your feet, maybe running your hands on your arms, your legs, coming fully back into your body. Just gonna take a little walk here as you adjust. Slowly open your eyes when you're ready. Ah, so that was a cool journey. Didn't think we'd do a clearing, but we did. And hopefully you will feel that. Um, The horses were definitely helping to clear us if you could feel them at all. This is midnight for those who have joined since we started. And he was holding the container of the masculine. He's a gelding, um, but he moved away from the gate and that kind of desire to leave and really came into meditation from a place of holding a container for us and um, a form of like protection is what I was feeling from him. And he's kind of here aligned up against the view of the Rockies. And then behind me is Salita, which you can see dreaming and running on the ground. How cute is that? See if you could have that view is. Oh. (laughs) 
So tuning in with Midnight for that energy. Thank you, buddy, so much. And then tuning in with Salita here. Oh, good girl. Oh, I'm going to sit here with her. I could go closer, but I think you'll have a better view this way. So see if you can kind of energetically feel like you're sitting with her right now with us. Oh. So as the meditation ended, she came over here, laid down, and wanted to kind of clear that, what we were working on, and relax and kind of surrender. And... Um, Horses are always in that space of doing what feels good. And so often we choose what we want to do based on shoulds and have tos, whether they're our own or others, parental or societal, however it may look. But horses are always doing what feels good. And they're not ashamed of that expression. And they don't question it. They don't ask permission. Um, they live in the herd dynamic, which may mean sometimes that um, the lead mare's needs come first. So for instance, if the lead mare rain came over here and wanted to lay in the spot, she would and Salita would get up. And part of what that is, is because the lead mare's job is to protect the herd. And so she has to come first. And, you know, so many of us did not necessarily learn that from our mothers, right? We learned sometimes especially, you know, based on your generation, um, that, that the man was coming first. And so the woman was the caretaker or putting her needs second. And I think now what's so beautiful about 2020 and the hindsight of that and the perfect vision of the energy of 2020 is that we can choose differently now. And we have so much to learn from horses and animals around somatics, which means essentially the body and how it's doing and feeling and experiencing life. And the first heaven on earth, if you were there, was um, around pleasure. And I'm reading Mama Gina's School of Womanly Arts. And it is about the expression of the feminine, but that pleasure, which we often don't even talk about that word because we think it means stuff have, it only has to do with sex, which it doesn't. Um, this right now is about pleasure. So her energy shifted because she thinks that they're the gates opening. But you can kind of tune into her right here for a second and kind of see what you get about what it means to be, to rest which many of us need as women to surrender, to feel pleasure, and to feel safe enough and protected enough also to just kind of let go because Midnight is standing right here for her. So the robin landed just behind her and the robin's energy is around new beginnings. And I think what's so neat, and I will let Reen out at some point, let her free so you guys can feel into what that looks like. But what's so neat about this right now is that there is a new beginning I think right now coming into understanding um, our relationships with being our own mothers, parenting ourselves. Um, especially if we didn't get the parenting that we wanted, which is most people that I talk to. And it, it could still be that we had great parents, but it wasn't exactly how we had hoped or wasn't in the love language that we had wanted. And so the Robin saying there's new beginnings. Robin's a very feminine bird. <laughs> And so feel into trusting, trusting that feminine energy because she has a lot of trust for me to sit here with a laptop 
and to go completely down like that. <laughs> She's totally dreaming and Many of you may not have gotten to kind of hang out with a horse like this. Um, so I just, I'm excited that we have this today. <laughs> One of the things I love about animals and why I wanted to do this, you know, it came in during the beginning of quarantine when I thought, well, what am I going to do now? <laughs> um, and I just heard she, church with Kate and the critters and I went oh geez the last thing I want to do is a church but I got really clear what that meant after some more meditation and essentially this wisdom share is really you know how can you learn from the animals their way of being on the world right horses have been here longer than us they know a lot about surviving and thriving because of that there you go there's her role Oh, good girl. Oh. <laughs> so their role modelship is about like fully enjoying your life. That's how they are. And she's now asking us to take some deep breaths on that. <sighs> so maybe she has a message for you on what the expression of feminine energy is. Salida is a very feminine horse. Um, see you tune in, maybe so you'll get one. Take a breath on that. I'm gonna say thank you to Midnight for holding space for us. Thank you, buddy. I'm gonna bring the laptop back here, Mr. Sweetness. So they're in 360 around right now, which is kind of neat. Hi, buddy. Sorry, I think I lost you guys. I'm glad this pops right back. <laughs> and um, thank you for those who have joined since uh, we started. So to kind of finish this, this wisdom share, you know, I think that we all have kind of our own perspective on femininity and Hopefully some of the energy that needed to clear on that did today or that you got a message. Um, <laughs> pain behind me is hilarious right now. So you can even see what she's doing.
So part of what she, I feel like, is communicating, it's almost like she's standing on this balance beam, if you can kind of see it here. Um, but she almost tried to stand on it, and there's, you know, no real way that she actually could based on her size and the size of that balance beam. And so to me, you know, there's a lot of things she could be doing in here. She's not even really at the gate anymore. So for her to bring in the balance beam, I'm gonna run with that as part of the sharing. I don't pre prepare the wisdom shares. They come through me as in the moment, as all my work really does, just to kind of see what is presented as I'm in co-creation with the horses and with nature. And uh, I find that those are kind of the best kind of call them sermons, call them talks, call them shares. I just liked the energy around wisdom share. Um, but the balance beam is something that I think a lot of us are always trying to walk, that there's this kind of constant, <laughs> that would be a big yes. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that. So, um, oh, let's see if she's going to try to step on it. Yep. So she really wants you guys to kind of get a sense of like, and this will probably lead us into the journal prompt, but like, what are you trying to balance that you feel like you can just integrate at this point, right? Like the masculine and feminine for me feels pretty integrated. Um, and the we need both, right? And so, but wh what are we trying to balance where we're not able to because we're trying to take on too much or, um, we feel like we should be in balance, and so it's a judgment that we're not. Whereas, what if you were already more integrated than you realized? What if you already had more balance than you were giving yourself credit for? What if you're doing beautifully moving between things, and all you need is your own acknowledgement? And so I find so often she's now pushing this away. What do you got, girl? Yeah, I think part of what I feel like she's been saying is like, let's let go of this balance beam stuff, right? This whole conversation of like, we need to have work-life balance and we need to, things blend, things integrate, things flow in the feminine. There is a moment where you're at work and then all of a sudden you have to be with a child or you have to shift gears. And you know, it's somewhat masculine to compartmentalize and they're very good at that energy is good at that. But the energy of just being able to get on a beam and walk with trust and confidence <laughs> and making the beam just your life, right? But not this like narrow thing that you have to do well or perfectly that you don't want to fall or fail on and making that some sort of Mm, obligation or energetic that's no longer serving you. So I kind of feel like she's pushing it out of the way for a reason. And she's bringing in the energy of pride just because I know her body expression so much. And so she is seeing that like to be proud of all that we've already created and all of that we already have in our lives, that that has been our manifestations, right? And whether it's children and jobs or partners or friendships or family um, or responsibilities and whatever it may be, um, but to kind of energetically take yourself off this narrow balance beam that you feel like you have to somehow control and really just allow your life to be one big beam, to just be what it is and to be in that flow state. Oh, did you like your share? Aw, thank you, love. That's the first time she's come over today. Good girl, that was a good share. Good girl. And she said, when things bug you, just get your needs met. Like, she's taking care of this right here. So, would you like help? You got that? You got it? Okay. She's like, I got it, Kate. <laughs> So this is the energy of like, when you have a need or you have a scratch, just take care of it. Just do what needs to be done in the moment. Don't push it off. Good girl. Thank you. Yeah. 
So she's kind of using whatever she can here, clearly the table, to take care of her needs. Girl. Yeah, good girl. So we're going to start journaling in a second, but I want you to start to think about your needs and what they might be. Oh. Just giving everyone a blast of love today, aren't you? Yeah. So feel into her heart space for a second. Yeah. Rain has a huge heart. She's helped me quite a bit release and process grief and breakups and all that good stuff. And she just walked away and did a big, a big fart, big release, which Midnight did earlier too. So they're clearing, which is nice. Um, so that was kind of cool. That was a, a neat expression. Sweetness is clearly doing the same, right? Just getting his needs met. So it very much is a thing that animals do and that we can learn from and not create stories around, like, it's just like, hey, I ha you know, you're not going to create a story around whether you need to go to the bathroom. You're just going to go. And so I want you to extend that into what other areas of your life need to be considered at that level of need. One of the things I do with private clients is a needs assessment off the bat around mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual needs. Um, and then scheduling them and creating time for them. Um, and it's so neat to see the shifts. Uh, there was a, a woman who was on, learned from one of the horses, it was Salida, because she talks about, Salida talks about self-care a lot, uh, the one who was laying down before the chestnut. And she just started a practice every single day now of a specific type of movement that she's doing in the morning that she really likes. Um, and, Oh, and meditation. So there's like a pairing of different things that are that are happening, but um, the meditation for the mental and the Pilates for the physical. And so I just, I offer this to you guys to consider, you know, and to be like the horses, right? And uh, the feminine is very clear about what she needs and wants and truly does get her, her needs met. She realizes that the goddess energy is prosperity, the goddess energy is abundance, and the goddess energy is very much about um, knowing our worth and claiming it. And it's not like this demanding bossy energy whatsoever, but it's just the knowing that we can receive all good and the opening and allowing of it and enjoyment of it as it happens, right? And so it's a practice. It's, a, it's, a, it's not something we were necessarily taught. And it, we become more comfortable with it over time as we step into it. So I kind of offer all that and we are going to hop up to the goats to, to end this with some fun. They may be frolicking in a field, so it may take me an extra minute to get them in if you're able to stay an extra minute or two. Um, but I want to kind of energetically open the gate for you all net right now and allow these guys out setting the feminine freer than it's ever been before as we need that right now on the planet and whatever that might mean to you what needs to be set free and they're gonna head out as you can kind of see behind me thanks sweetness thanks rain thank you sweetie Thanks, Midnight. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Salida. All right, so as I head up to the goats, I'm going to just give you a couple journal prompts if you want to them, if you want to journal on these questions. Um, the first is, 
what does femininity mean to me? And then circling the beliefs that you want to keep because some of them, I mean, we cleared some of the ones that aren't maybe so helpful, but um, really starring or clearing or circling the ones that you really want to form into maybe an affirmation. Um, for me, the word flow is a big one. And, um, and then maybe thinking about which of the feminine qualities you'd like to grow more of. We talked about nurturing today. There's lots of different feminine archetypes. We talked about the mother today, mentioned the goddess briefly, certainly talked about the lead mare energy. These are different feminine archetypes. Um, maybe thinking which quality you'd like to grow more in the coming weeks. And then also what your relationship is with the divine feminine and how you might be able to grow that in your life. It's a different kind of energetic. Um, and the last one is around, what would being the lean mare of your life look like more? What would more of being the lean mare look like for you? And then the horse has just added one. So it's like, what would, what need do you have that's not being met that you really need to schedule and put in your calendar and block off time for, for you? That's a, that's a need on the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, just one need. Um, so I'm gonna give you some of those prompts. We'll circle in a couple minutes because I'm going to head up, walk up to the goats. For those of you that haven't been here before, they are not just down here. Um, and I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to stop my video and mute, but I will be back in just a couple minutes.